In this video, we'll be exploring triangle area. I'll construct a triangle using this web sketchpad model. I'll construct its altitude. I'll use that to measure the area of the triangle. And then I'll explore an interesting challenge. Can I drag a vertex of my triangle to keep the area the same? This video accompanies a blog post on Sign of the Times, and a link to that blog post can be found below this video. So let's start by constructing a triangle. I'll tap the Segment tool, and when I do, I see a preview of a segment with one endpoint glowing. That glowing is indicating that I need to put that point somewhere. So I'll just tap anywhere, say over here, place that point. Now the other endpoint of the segment is glowing. Let's tap over here. Now my tool is done and I have my segment, one side of the triangle. To continue, I'll double tap the segment tool to keep the tool active after I've used it. And for this glowing endpoint, I'm going to tap here to the existing endpoint to match them. The other glowing endpoint, I'll tap anywhere, like right there. Now I'm immediately given a new segment to place, and this one I will tap here to attach those two points, and here to complete the triangle. I'll now tap X because I no longer need any segments. So here is my triangle, and I'd like to compute its area, so I'm going to construct an altitude of the triangle. First, however, let's use the label widget to name the vertices. I'll tap each one, A, B, and C. So to construct the altitude, I will use the perpendicular tool. I'll tap that, and I see a preview of a segment that is glowing, as well as a line that is perpendicular to the segment through a point. Let's first deal with this glowing segment. I would like BC to be the base of my triangle, its altitude, so I will tap BC to attach this glowing segment to it. And I would like my altitude to pass through point A, so I'll tap point A to attach this glowing point to it. And there, I now have a line that's perpendicular to BC that passes through point A. So my altitude I can construct by going from point A to where this line intersects BC. So let's mark that intersection point using the point tool. That's right here. And before I construct my segment, let's hide, using the visibility widget, this line. So when I tap the widget, I now can tap the objects that I'd like to hide which in this case is just the line. And you'll see the line turns gray, which indicates that when I tap the visibility icon again, that line is hidden. The point is still there, and that tells us where to construct our segment, from point A to that point. And let's label that point, point D. All right, let's just check to make sure that our altitude is always in place when I drag the vertices of the triangle. And it's looking good, but when we get here, when the measure of angle ABC is greater than 90 degrees, that altitude no longer exists, and ditto over here. So this is not a particularly robust construction, so we need to rethink what we need to do Let's tap the undo arrow a few times to back up. And to make this construction more robust so that it works for situations like this, let's start by constructing a line through BC. And now when we construct our perpendicular, let's use this line here to match to the segment rather than what we did before, which was to tap BC to match those two segments. So I'll tap the line, 
and I'll tap point A. So now wherever I drag point A, we see there is a point here that's always well-defined that allows us to construct the altitude. So I'll tap the point tool again. I'll tap where this line through point A, perpendicular to the line through BC, meets it right there. And as before, we'll use the visibility widget to hide the line. And while we're at it, let's hide this line through BC as well. Now I'll construct the altitude of the triangle right there. And as I drag point A, yes, indeed, the altitude always exists. So let's measure some lengths. I'll tap the length tool. I see a preview of a segment and its length. I'm going to tap to attach the segment to BC. Now here I have the length of BC given to me. If I drag point B, that measurement updates. And I'm also going to measure the altitude. So I'll tap the length tool again and tap DA. So now I have these two measurements. And I'd like to calculate the area of the triangle. I'll tap the Calculate tool, and I'll tap inside this rectangle, and that brings up my calculator. Now to compute the area, if this was a normal calculator, I would type these values into the calculator. But if I type the values in, that's not a very powerful technique. Because if I drag a vertex of my triangle, these measurements are going to update but my calculation won't. So that's not very helpful. So with Web Sketchpad, rather than type these numbers directly into the calculator, I can simply tap directly on BC to enter that measurement into the calculator, and then tap on the measurement of DA, multiplying them together. And since we're finding the area, I will divide by two. So here is our area for this particular triangle and notice that if I drag point A, for example, the area is automatically updated. That leaves just one challenge and the most interesting part of this whole exploration, perhaps. How can I drag point A to keep the area of my triangle constant? Well, I can keep it reasonably constant if I drag it very carefully. And if I want to get a little more of a sense of where I can drag point A to keep the area constant, I'm going to come here to my trace widget and tap on that, and then tap on point A to trace point A as I drag it. So now as I drag point A, trying vigilantly to keep the area as constant as I can, notice that the path of point A is being traced so I can see all the locations for point A where the area is roughly the same. I'm going to come down here to 21 centimeters squared if I can. So not exactly the best possible path I've traced here, but we can get a pretty strong sense that the path of point A that keeps the area of the triangle at uh, roughly 21 centimeters squared is going to be a line that is parallel to B, um, BC. And that makes sense because if I can keep point A on that line, then AD is going to be of constant length, which therefore means, since BC isn't changing its length, that the area will be the same. So let's erase traces. Let's also tap point A again to turn off its tracing. And let's see if we can make a parallel line here for point A to glide along. So I'll tap on the parallel tool. I want the line to be parallel to uh, BC. So I'll tap on BC. And I'll place this point anywhere I like. So now we have a line that is parallel to BC. Well, I would like point A to be able to travel along that line, 
but I don't want to have to use my own dragging skills with my trackpad to keep it on that line. I'd rather it just get attached to it. So I'll drag point A onto the line. The line is glowing. I'll let go. And now I have merged point A onto that line so it is stuck to it. It can only travel along that line. And notice that when I do, our area stays steadfast at 37.07 centimeters squared. Just to check, if I drag point B, I drag point A again, I have a new constant area. And this is a pretty nifty way to be able to keep the area constant. So this video introduced you to Web Sketchpad's tools. It introduced you to how to construct a very robust altitude that remains in place no matter how points A, B, and C are dragged. You learned how to use the Calculate tool as well as how to use this merge feature that allowed you to merge point A to align parallel to BC.